yeah, I, I, I'm really gonna do this. But before I do that, this episode kind of almost sort of has a sponsor. So, um, I have, I've gotten into a partner affiliate program with Humble Bundle. Now, this is not something that I'm gonna plug uh, every single uh, video that I put up, but when there are um, things that I think are relevant to um, my subscriber base on Humble Bundle, I'm gonna bring to you them to your attention, and there's gonna be an affiliate link down in the description. And if you go to Humble Bundle through that link and make your purchase that way, that does help me. Um, that that you know assists me, and that gives me a that gives me a small financial boost. I, you know, I'm not. They're not a sponsor insofar as I'm not strictly speaking being paid to talk about this. But if you do, if you choose to support Humble Bundle and do it through the link that'll be in the description, that does actually help me. Um, if you don't know what Humble Bundle is, it's basically kind of a it's a charity fundraising um, style thing where they basically put together a whole bunch of themed stuff. Sometimes it's a whole bunch of video game stuff. You know, sometimes it's themed around franchises and what have you, and you pay, you decide how much you pay for it. Now, how much you pay does determine how much you get, but you will get something. You will get something related to whatever the thing is. And in this particular case, um, there is a Humble Bundle that runs through, I believe, through the first week of October uh, that um, is for Doctor Who comics, which is, are not something that I've talked about before. I am gonna um, work on talking about something related to that um, in the not so distant future, so I can kind of get a baseline going on that. But the thing is, Humble Muddle actually reached out to me before, um, a month or two back, when they ran something for Big Finish Audio stuff. And I didn't sign up for the affiliate thing at that point because I knew what Humble Bundle was and I'd heard good things, but I'd never purchased anything through them. I didn't know what the experience was like actually buying a Humble Bundle. I actually did with that um, Doctor Who audio thing. And I got a whole bunch of stuff, including some Torchwood audios, which I I didn't have and hadn't planned to get to, but now I have some, so I'll be able to do that now. So I've got, I, I've now bought the experience and so now I feel comfortable because even though as much as I would honestly really kind of love sponsors, I would love to find a way to make my living off this. I've been approached by a number of companies before about, you know, links for, you know, and coupon codes or, you know, sponsoring a video or, or what have you. But when I've looked into the companies, they've, they, they haven't made me comfortable. Like they, I would look into them and go, ah, like I'm looking at your, your consumer experiences and there's some red flags here for me. So I'm not gonna name any of those companies because that, that's not fair to them. But this was the first where I like, I looked into it, went through the experience of buying through them and went, yeah, I feel comfortable actually associating with that. So I'm making you aware. And so, yeah. Humble Bundle link, Doctor Who comic book material. Check it out, and if you're interested in doing it, you are supporting charities, you get a whole bunch, of, no matter what tier you go with, you get a whole bunch of stuff for the money that you spend, and yeah, you'd be helping me out a little bit. Okay, that's enough of that. That was probably really awkward. I'm not used to plugging stuff that isn't my own stuff on here. Hopefully, if I ever do something like this again, it will be smoother. Let's move on. It's true, I am about to overanalyze a tiny section of a scene from the upcoming premiere of Doctor Who. Normally, I, I try not to indulge in this. It seems just like excessive, but I'm so, I'm really excited for this. Plus, it does actually touch on something that I have said that I wanted it. It kind of gives it to me, assuming that what we see of it here is pretty much the extent of it. Now, I have said in the past, and I'm talking about the, the sort of first look preview thing that came out for The Woman Who Fell to Earth. Uh, it's sort of like a one scene thing. It's it's in a dark. It looks like it's uh, it's in a subway car, um, and you know it's dark. The lights are out. The doctor's there, and we've got two of the characters who are going to become companions. Sort of going, hey, what what are you doing here? What's going on? There's just a little uh, interaction, a little banter back and forth with them. So uh, in looking at this scene, um, I have said previously that I want the doctor's change of gender to be addressed as minimally as 
possible. I want as little emphasis put on this as can be gotten away with. Not necessarily because I think there's no value in delving into this change more, but because I don't trust Chris Chibnall to tackle that. Not at this point. I mean, you know, maybe I can gain that confidence over time. Maybe he'll actually go the distance and do it and it'll work. I don't know. I don't have the faith in him to be able to tackle that. So I've said before, I really want as little as possible. And the way that it's handled here in this clip is exactly what I want, especially if this is all it is, which is that they're like, madam, you know, where, where are you going? She goes, why are you calling me madam? Because you're a woman. Am I? Does it suit me? And that, that's perfect. Like that, that, that moment, like the only point of concern is, oh, is it working for me? It's, it's, it's very reminiscent of Tenet, like, am I ginger? Or, um, you know, just Smith going through his body, nose, I've had worse chin, blimey. You know, I, and I love that sort of concern. And, and it, it doesn't even, I, I, I haven't looked at other people's analysis of these things. And, and some, you know, even some channels that I follow do this, but I really make a point of not looking at that stuff before I get my own video out because I want it very much to be my own thoughts. So I have no idea if people have looked into this too hard. I could imagine a scenario in which people are like, oh yeah, now that, now that the doctor's a woman is all concerned about uh, the appearance and oh, she's going to be obsessed with that. Except the doctor's almost always concerned about their his appearance uh, whenever he's been regenerated, at least in modern era he has been. So this has been hammered on for a while. Even Eccleston, who we didn't even see the regeneration into, he gets a look at a mirror and Rosie goes, oh, it's not too bad. Shame about the ears. You know, this is this is an ongoing thing. So, and this, this feels just right. Again, if it's pretty much the full extent of the dealing with the change in gender, at least for this series. Like, Eventually, if they want to have the doctor run into a former companion and like you can have it come up a little bit through that companion's eyes, I'll be okay with that. But I want the doctor herself to address it as little as possible. Moving on from that, because I liked that, um, the rest of what I see seems fine. Um, nothing that I'm too worried about. And um, a few things that I'm like, oh, I hope that doesn't go on too long. They seem to be doing the doctor... Amnesia, 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 why can't I speak all of a sudden? Amnesia-ish thing that happens occasionally and I'm, I'm generally not a fan of it. Like I, if I were to guess, I would say they're hoping that this new, that series 11 is gonna serve as a jumping on point for a lot of new viewers. And they're probably gonna use the doctor realizing who she is as a way to present more stuff to audiences for the first time. Kind of like a little bit how um, with uh, the 11th hour with Matt Smith's first episode, uh, they really filtered through Amelia Pond, the doctor explaining pretty much everything that he is. Now, you could still do that through the companions. I think they, they seem to be preferring to do it through the doctor in a sense of self-discovery. So narratively, I get it. Um, and uh, yes, I realize I'm overanalyzing this. Don't tell me that. I know. I, I'm part of the problem. I realize that. But if it's... yeah, So I, I get it, but at the same time, I don't... I don't like the Doctor with amnesia. I didn't like it in the Doctor Who movie. I don't like it, you know, in general with the, you know, I, I like the Doctor realizing what kind of Doctor he, now she, is going to be. I like that with Tennant when, you know, the the Sycorax are yelling at him, who are you? He goes, I don't know. Or, you know, with Capaldi, you know, going, door. Not me. He goes out the window. Me. And, you know, that sort of realizing who they are as they go along. I love that. But actually going to the step of, the, of not even knowing who she is, I, I don't know. Feels like an overstep. Again, we'll see it. It's all execution dependent. Not a lot to go off of with the, um, with the new companion so far. They seem fine from what little I've seen. Um, they seem prepared to roll with some weirdness, at least a certain degree of it. Like a woman asking what 
uh, is called. Another moment I don't love, but is mercifully over kind of quick. And I do like her comeback um, when she gets told it. Oh, good boy, biology. So like, I'm, I'm liking that, those sorts of bits of banter. And I'm, I'm hopeful based off this cliff. Cliff, clip. I, do, I, I am not drunk, I swear. I don't know what's wrong with me tonight. Um, but in any case, I, I do think this clip is solid. And having, you know, looked at it more times than I should, and now overanalyzed it for you folks, um, it does not dampen my enthusiasm at all. I am really excited for the new season of Doctor Who. It is, yeah, I'm, I'm pumped for this. And it, it just, it, it can't come here soon enough. I want to sit down and I want to get to know this doctor so badly. So those are my thoughts on this little first look clip thing that we got. I, I'm going to try and not do any more unexpected Doctor Who videos between now and when the, uh, the first episode premieres. So, uh, you know, you'll get the overdue Who review on Wednesday. I'm, de I'm really debating whether I'm going to do, I've, what, because I ha I'm going to have to do the reviews of the new episodes. Those are going to have to come out on Monday. They, they just are. Um, I'm not going to, like, given the airtime, especially of the premiere, because they're doing, you know, a simulcast thing, I, I could theoretically have it up later in the day on Sunday, but I don't want to do that fast to turn around. I don't like turning around something in less than 24 hours. It's just not fun for me. So, you know, I'm kicking it to Monday. I know I'm doing that. What I haven't I'm going back and forth on is whether or not I'm still going to have a Doctor Who video out on Sunday, which is what I've been doing for a very long time. Um, I don't know. I don't know, because if I, if I keep that while the new series is airing, that means I'm doing three Doctor Who videos a week, and that feels like overload. Like, I, kn I know that a lot of people know me primarily as a, as a WhoTuber, as a Doctor Who channel, but I... Ah, I don't know. But then again, it would only be three for as long as the new series runs. I don't know. I'm going back and forth. Um, so if you have thoughts on that, as well as this clip, by all means, share them. So whatever your thoughts are, drop something down in the comments. Let's talk about it. There's a whole bunch of other stuff you can do because there's buttons and there's links, including a link to the Patreon. Also, your little reminder, the Humble Bundle, it is, and the link is down below. So check that out if you didn't already, if you feel like it. If you don't, don't worry about it because you folks, you're the council and I just run the meetings. And until next time, this council is adjourned.